Welcome to our Sunday evening service here at Four Mile Baptist Church. So glad you've chosen to join us for our Sunday evening worship online by Facebook, YouTube. Let's all stand together and start our service together as we sing this old song. We enjoy this old song around here. He keeps me singing. Let's sing it together. Hey man, I love that old song, don't you? I'm telling you, you've been singing that song about, about most of my life. I really have my mom used to sing it with me years ago, and we used to sing it together, and I'm glad as a congregation we sing it a lot around here, and I'm thankful for it. Boy, I'm telling you, something like having a song in your heart. The psalmist said, he put a new song in my heart. He even prays unto our God. And that's what we're gathered here tonight to do is to worship the Lord and praise him. And I'm glad we can do that. I want to thank you for joining us online to worship the Lord together tonight. We're in for a good time. Brother Daniel, our music man and our son, and I'm thankful for what he does around here at the house. House of the Lord uh, here at Four Mile Baptist Church is going to bring in a, be bringing our message here in just a little bit, and we're excited about that. Amen. I hope you are too. So we're looking to the Word of God together. Nothing like the Word of God to encourage our hearts and strengthen us in these days.
days in which we're living. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the wonderful time we had here in your house together with your people this morning. I want to thank you for the good number who was here this morning, Lord. And I want to thank you for the privilege to be back tonight to worship you and for all those who've tuned in online to worship you tonight. Lord, I ask you now that you just bless us and you'd help us and you'd meet our needs. Lord, I'm glad you know the need of every person that's tuned in. Lord, everyone on the sound of my voice, there's not a single person that you don't know what we stand in need of. And Lord, you're able to meet those needs in accordance with your own perfect will. So I ask you, Lord, that you'd encourage that one that's discouraged. You'd strengthen that one this week. Lord, that you would, uh, our Father, speak to the hearts of that one that needs direction, that one that needs assurance, that one that just needs your touch. I'm glad you're able to do it. That one that needs healing, Lord, sick in body. I'm glad you are the great physician. Nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, you know what we need before we ever call. But Lord, you said call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. I'm glad you're that same God you're able to touch tonight. Touch now in the needs of your people. And those that are tuned in tonight, you know, Lord, what to do in their hearts and lives. Touch now. We'll praise you for all you do in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I get excited when I think about being in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad I am tonight. Amen. I want to invite you to come and be with us in service here at Four Mile Baptist Church in person, live and in full color. Amen, as we call it, around here in full worship. That's what we want to do is just worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We're old-fashioned folks that love God and love to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's what it's about. I'm telling you, just coming in here and just praising the Lord and just acknowledging Him for what He's done in our hearts and our lives. Our next uh, scheduled in-person service is Wednesday evening. Wednesday night, we study the Word of God together, and uh, I want to tell you, 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 you'll be welcome if you come. We're located on the Wildlife Lake Road just off of Highway 100 south of Somerville, Georgia. So I invite you to come. If you're in our area and can, Abel, you come on and be with us. On Sunday mornings, we have Sunday school and Bible classes, and uh, we study the Word of God at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, and then uh, at 11 o'clock, we have people that gather right here in our sanctuary, and we just worship the Lord. We lift up songs and praise God together, and we just uh, try to adore the Lord, and then I preach, or someone else preaches from the Word of God. Right out of the Word of God, a message uh, that God's laid on our hearts as we prepared ourselves to worship Him. Amen. So I want to invite you to come. If you're able and can, uh, we invite you to come. Amen. Well, Brother Daniel is going to bring our message here in just a few moments. I'm thankful for him, what the Lord has done in his life, what the Lord is still doing, and how the Lord is using him to speak to our hearts. Many of our men on Sunday night bring messages. Our Sunday school teachers and other men of our church bring messages right out of the Word of God that speak to our hearts, and I'm thankful for our men, what God's doing in the lives of our men here at Four Mile Baptist Church. That's what it's about. Boy, I'm telling you, leading our families, leading our homes, and trying. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're just trying to be what God wants us to be and be all that we can for the Lord. Amen. Right after this song, he's going to come with a message tonight. Sister Paige, Paige Farmer, uh, she's our pianist. I thank the Lord for her and Brother Doug. Uh, she's going to come and sing for us. This is a beautiful song. I hope it speaks to your heart like it speaks to mine. This valley is for me. You know, sometimes God leads us through the valley so he can speak to us, so he can draw us aside. Sometimes we're tested and tried in the valley, but boy, I'm thankful he knows what to do to us in the valley to prepare us and help us. Even in the valleys, he's with us. He's the God of the mountain, but he's the God of the valley too. You listen to Sister Paige sing this beautiful song, and right after that, uh, Brother Daniel's going to bring our message tonight. Amen. Let's just worship the Lord together.
Good evening. Thank you for joining us here at Four Mile Baptist Church, our Sunday evening broadcast here on Facebook and YouTube. I'm Daniel Smith. I'm glad to have you with us here tonight. Tonight, uh, we're going to be looking into some verses uh, here in 1 Corinthians. If you go, want to go ahead and turn over there, uh, we're going to talk about uh, just a, a couple of major points I just want to bring out. I think the Lord would have for us here uh, tonight. You know, our world has experienced division uh, since the beginning of, of time, literally, uh, across our culture, uh, whatever, uh, uh, whatever, however you want to look at it. Uh, and of course, the church has experienced division uh, since since the beginning. Um, and I, just a couple of things I want to point out as, as how we should function um, as the church. And there's a couple of things here. Uh, but to, like I said, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, the first part of this chapter, Paul is talking about spiritual gifts. And he's writing here, essentially saying we have diversity of gifts, uh, diversities of operations, differences of administrations. And he's basically saying, hey, on the, on the local level, at, at your specific church, it may operate a little differently. It may look a little different. Uh, there may be di people have different gifts uh, and that's okay because he goes on to say, well, it's from the same God. It's from the same spirit. You're baptized in the same spirit. The same Lord working in all of them as we are the children of God, as we are believers. Uh, meaning we're not all meant or designed to perform the same tasks or jobs. And we know that. We know we don't all have the same uh, spiritual gifts. We don't all have the same uh, abilities as others. And, and we're familiar with that. Um, but I, I think of it like a like a business, and you know the church is not a business. Well, let me just go ahead and put that out there. Uh, but but the Lord has a, a delegation of duties and responsibilities and roles that carry out the work of the church. Now it is in that sense it is like a business. If 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 we're all doing the same administrative job. Um, in a business, the, the actual operations are going to go, it's, it's not going to exist. You know, you have to have people in different roles and different responsibilities uh, for that business to function. And it takes all of us. Uh, so now we're going to build on, on the first part of chapter 12, which I just kind of surmised very, very briefly. And we're going to start with verse 12 and we're going to go through verse 27. Okay, so verse 12, we start, it says, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, for our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now we're going to go back to verse 12 and 13. And I want you to focus on those for just a minute. And we hear these verses, and we often use these verses, uh, but I want you to focus on these two, and, and we're going to spend a few moments here tonight, and then we'll, then we'll move down uh, into the rest of the text there. And when you hear the word one, and I tried to emphasize that as I was reading, Paul uses the word one here 12 times 
in these in this just this little short context, this little short uh, sixteen verses. One here meaning identical or the same, one body, one spirit. Uh, it just goes on. We are one body, one mind, one spirit as it relates to the church and work of the church. Unity is is his emphasis here. We should be united. Okay, in Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven through thirteen, Paul writes that God equips us with works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. It takes all of us to build up the body of Christ. Nothing, not one building, not anything you see that has been built, it can can be built up unless all the parts work together. The structural members, the joists, um, you know, all, all of those, the foundation, all that has to work together for that building to stand. And if one part is weak, eventually it's going to show up and, and the found, or the building will fail. Okay, but unity is what we're talking about here. Unity is what binds us together even when we have differences of opinion. Now, believe it or not, in the church, sometimes there is a difference of opinion on maybe how things should be uh, handled or, or, or run or, or this or that. And I'm not getting into the specifics here, uh, but I, I want you to just remember that word there, unity. Okay, uh, but the Bible also says uh, that, that we can be angry but sin not. And sometimes, and I may be uh, uh, touching here, uh, maybe um, bringing out some things here you, you, may, you maybe didn't think about, uh, or maybe didn't want to think about, but sometimes we get angry with each other in the church. I'm talking about as a whole. In our church, we, we pretty well get along uh, very well, and I, and, and, and I love that. I love that about our church, and I'll talk more about our church here in just a minute. Uh, but the Bible says, be angry and sin not. So what prevents us or helps us from the sin not part? From, from the from the holding it against somebody and retaliation. It's the love and the unity that we have for each other as children of God. And as a child of God, even if, if, if going outside just a little bit here, even if somebody is not a child of God, we should still sin not because we are the example. We should be setting the example of how to treat others and how to respond to others even when we are angry. But inside the church, because we, in the end, we are all working for the same purpose to build up the church for God's glory. But now talking about unity, but I don't want to confuse that with uniformity. Unity and uniformity are not the same. Although we are one body, we have many members. And that's what Paul is illustrating here. Uh, with those many members comes diversity. Okay. We may look different. We may talk different. We may have been raised in a different environment or a different family situation that causes us to see things from a different perspective or a different lens. Okay, that, that's not necessarily our fault, uh, but that's something we can bring to the table um, as we as we go about the church business and go about uh, the, the operations of the church. Okay, um, we can't all be the pastor. We can't all be in charge of the kids' ministry or the music or the ladies' fellowship. Uh, you just you pick a, a branch uh, or operation of the church. We can't all be in charge of that, and it wasn't designed to be that way. Okay, we can't all be heads or eyes or feet. You know, we read those verses. What if the head, uh, you know, were to say, I have no need of, of the hands or the feet? Uh, that, that's crazy because they all we need it all. We all work together. Uh, the church by design cannot function without some diversity among its members. We, we shouldn't and we can't all be the exact same. And that's okay. We are all blessed and have been given a different purpose. And part of uh, uh, one of the, the beautiful things of being a child of God is when you recognize that purpose and you recognize and identify what God has given you to give to your church and say, hey, I'm available to do this. I have the ability to do this. And not only do I have that ability, I want to do that. I'm available to do that. I present myself um, as a working member of the church and say, this is what I can offer. And this is what I want to do because God has called me to do this. Amen. We fulfill that for his glory. Okay, see where I'm going with this now. Okay, now right here in the middle of this, and this is going to take up a few minutes, um, and I really want you to, uh, to, to, maybe, to, to maybe process this um, as we go here. Paul takes a huge left turn uh, using the same imagery of the body to, to illustrate a key point. He's almost saying, hey, oh, by the way, while I got you here, let me just kind of 
reiterate this or kind of nail this down too. Um, just the same as the head cannot do what the feet can do or the eyes can do what the ears can do, we must care for and protect the, the weaker, he, he says less honorable, weaker members of the body. And believe it or not, back in, uh, well, not back in those days, but still today, there are social and economic boundaries, um, if I can say it that way, since communities and cities and, and, and you know, human beings have, have existed. There's always been a divide there. And we see a distinct separation between rich and poor, healthy and sick, all through the scriptures. You know, if you were rich, you probably had a more honorable position in, in that faction of society or even the, the religious faction of that society. If you were sick, you were usually outcast or, or segregated from society. Uh, you didn't hold a honorable position at all. Uh, people looked at you and saw pity on you. Um, or judged you, you know, what, what, what was your sin? What sin uh, has, has his parents uh, done that caused this man to be this way? You remember those scriptures? But Paul's reminding us here, not just about rich or poor or sick or health, but also in regards to socioeconomic status, we must lift up and honor those who are in a more, less honorable position for various reasons. And why, uh, why do you say that, Brother Daniel? Why, why are we going down this path here? Well, in verse 23, Paul says to, uh, to those we think, to be less honorable. Now, why would he say that? Why would he say we think? And I actually went back and looked this up as I was studying and preparing for this. Uh, the, the word here he uses is dokeo. Dokeo, and it literally means be of the opinion of. Now, what happens when we start talking about opinions? Kind of like I prefaced before. Maybe we were raised different. Maybe we have a different perspective. Maybe we, maybe we look at things a little different. And by virtue of that, um, we have an opinion that may differ from others or maybe different from so-and-so or different from so-and-so. So why would he say we think or dokeo, be of the opinion of? He didn't say God sees or God knows that it's less honorable or we know that it's less honorable. He said, but we think, dokeo, we are of the opinion of that it's less honorable. Because he knows in our minds we see people around us and we start to form an opinion of them, maybe by their appearance, maybe by the way they talk, uh, maybe by the way they walk. He knows that we're human, okay? That doesn't make it right or justified, but he knows we're human. And he's saying here parts we may think to be less valuable is what he's getting at here, less valuable. Uh, but the church at Corinth, and this is why this is important here, I think he says this, the church at Corinth, they were seeking individual glory or recognition. They were looking at self. They were saying, how can I be better than this, how can I do things better or be seen, get more, you know, accolades for what I'm doing here? They were seeking for themselves and not working for the ultimate glory of God. And when we start to focus on ourselves, here we go. Now we're getting sidetracked here. We begin to see others differently or less than we are. We are focused on self. We find fault in others automatically. We find negative things about others to make ourselves seem better or, or to look better look better. Um, it's true. You know, that's one of the issues here why Paul is writing to say, hey, it's not about you. You're one piece of the puzzle, but you don't make the whole picture. It's not all about you. It's not all about this, this job or this role or this responsibility. Uh, it's like a puzzle. We must have all the pieces to complete the finished project. My, my kids and I, back during uh, uh, COVID, when we spent a lot of time at home, we, we got some puzzles and we enjoy doing puzzles when we have time. Um, but you know, we, we've got these 1,000, 1,500, 3,000 piece puzzles um, and the kids love working on them. And, and, and I would always be nervous because I'm like, we're gonna get to the end of this and one piece is gonna be missing. You know, we're gonna be missing one piece and the whole picture's, you know, it's not gonna be complete no matter how big or small the picture is. If you're missing that one piece, it's just not complete. And Paul is saying here, it takes all of us. We're, we're a big puzzle, okay? It takes all of us, okay? So he says, when we as the church honor those who may deemed to be less honorable or less valuable, if we want to say it that way, by society or any other group of people, we become more united. When we are, when we are looking at people not as less valuable, but as equal and saying, hey, what you bring to this church, what you contribute to this church, is just as important as what I contribute. The role is different. Maybe the responsibility, maybe it's more time consuming. Maybe it 
it takes more of this or less of this, but it's just as important as this job. It's just as important as this responsibility. And we want you to view it that way. We want you to look at it that way, not as well, it won't matter if I'm not there today because so-and-so can do that, or you know, it's not that hard to do, so-and-so can do. What if the pastor did that? And I'm not talking about just our church. I'm talking about just churches in general. What if what if the pastor was just like, well, so and so can fill in, or or you know, I lead the music. Well, well just so and so can fill in. I just don't feel like going today. You know, well, what if what if so and so took up the offering? Well, it doesn't really matter. I, it's, it's not a big deal. You know, and that's uh, if we have that vision of our responsibility, but. What, what happens when we all do that? The church is, is going to fall apart. It's going to create division. It's going, to, it's going to cease to exist. But we have to look at each other and say, hey, and I'm just speaking me personally. I may direct the music, but that's just as important as the guys who uh, video the service because we broadcast that service online and people are counting on that and committed to that, to watching that as they can't be here in person. So it's just as important it all works together collectively, okay? Uh, when we do that, we become more as one. We become more united when we look at somebody and say, hey, you are just as valuable to this church. Every member is so important. Whatever role they have, we're just as important as, as the next one. Okay, in verse 25, right there he says, there should be no schism, no division in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And when one suffers, we all suffer. When one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. As believers in Christ, we're baptized in the same spirit, given by the same Lord, glorifying the same God. And each and every gift is vital to the work of the church. It is vital. It is so important. No matter how great you may think it is or how small you may think it is, when the church recognizes each and every gift functioning together as a whole, then we have God's intention for the church. That was his design all along, is that each individual part makes up the whole body. Okay, look at it like your physical body. It's the imagery Paul's using here. That's okay. If we're missing a right arm or a right leg or a left leg or an eye, the body is, is, is not complete. Okay, each member is so important. That's why we protect it. That's why we protect it. If we know we're going to be uh, somewhere or doing this or, or, or whatever, we protect it you know, with helmets or goggles or even clothing, you know, things like that. And I told you I was going to get to our church in a minute. One of the things I love about our church is we take the time to recognize uh, even the smallest things, um, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, graduations, other milestones in somebody's life. Uh, we take the time to honor those individuals, and that's so important. Um, it's just a small example, uh, but Paul is saying, hey, you know, do those things. Build, build those people up. Build everyone up. Encourage them. Build them up. Protect them. Be sensitive to their needs. Uh, uh, recognize what their needs are and, and recognize, uh, help them recognize what they can contribute to the church because we all work together here. We're all together. Uh, we become closer when we do that. We build a bond when we do that. When somebody's missing, we call and check on them and say, hey, missed you today. Is everything okay? It's not being nosy. It's just checking on them, being concerned about them. Okay? Um, let's see. Uh, when we lift each other up and we suffer together, we can rejoice together. You know, when somebody is sick or somebody uh, gets a bad diagnosis or, or somebody's family is going through something and we lift their name up in prayer, we call their name in church and, we, you know, we don't tell everybody's business or things like that, but just lifting their name up saying, hey, so-and-so needs prayer. Pray for them. We lift their name up so we can all, uh, in, in a sense, suffer together with them and pray for them so we can rejoice with them later, so we can rejoice with them when, uh, their situation changes for the better or something gets better in their life, we can rejoice together because we know the struggle. We, we've kind of been in it with them uh, even by prayer or supporting them in, in some way. Uh, and he ends it here um, in these verses I'm using, not in the chapter. But verse 27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. Now ye are the body of Christ when we worship work and honor in the same spirit from the same Lord, 
working for the same God. Now you are the body of Christ when all those things work together and we're not seeking individual gain or individual glory. We're unified, but we don't work. It's unity, but not uniformity. I love uh, diversity as far as uh, what different personalities we have in the church and what different uh, things we have in the church that, that people can bring to the table. I love that. It's so important. It's so important. Um, and I think that's the, that was the purpose for the church all along. So if you're a member of our church, we love you. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Maybe we don't tell you uh, quite enough. Um, and if you're not a member of our church, if you're just watching this, wherever you may serve, uh, in another church, uh, your role is important. Your responsibility is important. Treat it that way and view others the same way. It's just as important um, as the next role, as the next responsibility. Just recognize what God wants you to do in your church and go do it. Go do it. Don't, don't, don't back down. Don't be afraid. Just go do it. That's what God wants you to do, fulfilling his purpose. And now you are the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. I, I hope that was a blessing to you. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. And I hope you'll join us in person for Mile Baptist Church Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Um, we'd love to see you. We'd love to have you. Uh, but thank you for tuning in tonight. Hope you have a great week. Stay well. And we are praying for you. Amen.